good afternoon good evening uh which your part of the world you are in um thank you for attending today's uh, webinar by uh, acm and the goal here is going to be to you know give you an overview of the acm certification standards and then look at your own program and say hey you know um i'm interested in getting my uh, uh, you know masters in engineering management program certified and recognized and we do have outside the us also so it's not just us uh, british university of dubai um, their uh, engineering management program is um, certified by acm so so it's it's open to all and over the years uh, acm standards have become a generic by country so it's not focused only on the us um, so i'll briefly go through it and then uh, you know i'll um, be happy to answer any questions you have at the end so with that um, the agenda today i'm going to cover is uh, what are the academic standards for the program certification and that is the core uh, part of the certification standards uh, faculty you know curriculum <clears throat> student admission <clears throat> administrative support and then uh, we'll go to the process. You know, once you understand and say, okay, I get it. You know, uh, I think uh, we would like our program to be certified. What would you do? What is step one? So just like when you go for ABIT certification accreditation, they would have a study guide, right? So here we have a study guide as well. And then uh, there is a certification visit. So what happens during the certification visit? Um, you know, what is the cost to apply for certification? And then uh, some of the benefits, you know, programs have seen after they have been certified, um, you know, small universities and, you know, become um, globally recognized for their engineering management program. Uh, and then what are the program certification costs and then which programs are certified right now. All right. So with that brief uh, introduction of my agenda, I will get started. So uh, the intent of this program is to offer, you know, uh, people students and others knowledge that uh, recognition this program is recognized as you know meeting the high standards of acm and quality standards curriculum standards etc and uh, the certification process is applicable for all master's level programs in engineering management so we don't certify acm doesn't do anything at the undergraduate level or the doctoral level it's only at the master's level and a little bit of background how it happened you know a long time back abit only certified accredited undergraduate programs in engineering or not graduate and so there was a need at that time for you know many universities that had their undergraduate abit accredited and then the master's level uh, different professional bodies did their own certification so that's the time when acm you know started certifying masters in engineering management programs so um, it's a great way to distinguish your program um, from, you know, there's like 200 programs just in the US, you know, uh, in engineering management is there in Australia, in the Middle East, you know, um, Brazil, you name it, you know, it's all over the world. It's uh, different forms, um, you know, engineering management may have a different focus, maybe it's more civil engineering focused, civil engineering management in China or developing countries, maybe petroleum in South Africa, you know, so mining uh, or risk management in some, but the goal, the tools uh, that are used in engineering management, the core uh, curriculum is generally the same, even though the application area is different. And that's why it's possible to certify a wide uh, variety of engineering management programs uh, in different countries. So the first is um, the, uh, the academic standards, which are there. And in that is faculty requirement. So at least one full-time faculty member responsible for the program so that there's continuity. Uh, and all of the program requirements are ensured to, you know, ensure quality and um, ongoing um, quality control. So one faculty member is responsible for the person. Uh, typically, they also work as advisors. They are, that person may be responsible for uh, looking at the curriculum, any changes in curriculum and it's a continuing position. Full-time faculty will teach one third or more of the courses. Uh, this again, you know, the intent here is that you have uh, some people, you know, who are in the university and repeatedly teaching um, the same courses. Faculty workload should be appropriate to the reasonable 
and reasonable for the stated mission. So this is quite self-explanatory. Uh, curriculum requirements, a balance between qualitative and quantitative courses and also the domains of MBOC, right? So this is a, quite a big, um, you know, actually very important um, requirement. If you look at it, if you had to distinguish an MBA from engineering management, right? Uh, because students often say, I want to do, I don't know whether I should do an MBA or an engineering management, you know, and uh, they, so the key requirement here is quantitative, right? So we have, uh, you know, engineers using quantitative uh, tools for decision-making. That is the key distinguishing factor. And that's why when you go through the curriculum, you'll find that there is a requirement for statistics or quality engineering, or you know that type of thing, and then engineering economy. So it's all quantitative decision making. Now, organization behavior is there as an elective, but that's not like a required thing, right? The decision making uh, comes basically from uh, the quantitative analysis, and that's what distinguishes an engineering management uh, uniquely from the program in MBA or other business schools. Um, at least one third of the cur curriculum will be management and management related, right? So this again is important because there are some programs which are basically could be mechanical engineering or industrial engineering, and then you have and management. So uh, so there has to be at least a third of the courses which are um, you know management related. It could be project management, it could be operational management, you know, um, strategy strategic management, etc. So one third of the curriculum. A third of the courses will have a coordinator for the EM program. So, you know, initially this requirement um, many years ago was that you have to have a rubric, uh, which means the code for your courses with EM or EM, um, you know, whatever the name is and owned by the department or the program. Now that was a bit difficult because there are many departments which had industrial engineering and engineering management and the courses were engineering management but then you know, they didn't have a separate one for engineering management and separate for industrial engineering. It was all coded by department. And so at some stage, ACM certification college said, okay, the intent here is that the faculty in the EM program should have control over it. So you don't want like 10 courses, two from MBA, two from here, you know, uh, different courses where the bulk of the students are coming from a different major and the engineering management students sit there and there is no control on the curriculum. And that is the intent of there, which says third of the courses in the engineering management uh, must have a coordinator from the EM program who has oversight of the course content. So if there are any questions, just post it and uh, towards the end, Shruti will um, you know, put it all and send it to me. Course materials must be directly related to technology-driven organizations. Um, that is quite self-explanatory. Um, um, the curriculum must require each student to demonstrate a command of written and oral communication skills in English or in the language of instruction in countries where English is not the language of instruction. Um, you know, clearly, you know, if you look at a program, say in mechanical engineering or electrical engineering and look at engineering management, you know, definitely engineering management people would not just be doing, you know, calculations, design, they need to have good, communication skills uh, and that it would come for any leadership position, anyone going into management uh, career. And so the requirement you know, is there, but it also open for other countries where English may not be the language of instruction. Now uh, in the US, you know, uh, someone has done uh, you know, undergraduate degree from uh, English speaking country then um, maybe it's not required. That's fine because they've already demonstrated their English language proficiency. At the same time, students coming from non-English speaking backgrounds to the US or going to Canada or Australia, you know, are required to provide some proof of English proficiency like TOEFL or Duolingo test or IELTS or, you know, so many uh, tests are there. So that's all, uh, but ACM doesn't specify what the score should be. It just says that, you know, programs need to have it and ensure that students entering the program have the required language proficiency. Um, courses related to workers in a global environment, uh, as we are seeing, you know, engineering managers move, they work on projects, they work in uh, companies that have corporate 
headquarters somewhere, operations worldwide. And so there's a quite a need to have a global understanding um, of um, the way engineering businesses work. And each student, number seven, is required to perform a capstone project or thesis using analysis and integration of engineering management concepts. Now, um, in early, capstone was the only requirement and many programs in the US did not have a capstone project. And that was a roadblock. So they met all the requirements and, but they couldn't be certified uh, or they had a research paper. So uh, the ACM you know, um, college um, for program certification looked at, uh, did a survey of many programs worldwide and found that there are many programs that have projects in different courses uh, embedded in the courses rather than a single capstone project. Uh, and therefore the new you know, regulations say, okay, you can, you should have a capstone project, but if not, if you have projects embedded in uh, various programs, then that is um, acceptable as well, as long as it is you know, covering uh, all of the, you know, cumulatively is equal to a single project. So it doesn't have to be a single, just a capstone project, but many uh, programs have a single capstone project. Others have it embedded in different courses. A minimum of one course in statistics, quality engineering, or related area like some risk management or something where you're using some statistics. And that again is key to an engineering manager who takes decisions based on quantitative analysis, right? Something like statistical analysis or, uh, you know, and so people have statistics in different ways. Some have a requirement um, for statistics, some have quality engineering, some have risk management, et cetera. Um, a minimum of one course in engineering economy or financial management. Now we are seeing that some of the executive programs are using financial management and there are others who are using engineering economy. And so why is this important? Because any engineering manager will have to look for funding, uh, bid for projects or in within a company seek uh, competitive funds. And so they need to have a good understanding of present worth, future worth, how to calculate um, you know, which project should be funded and which should not. And so engineering economy is um, you know, required in the program. And two courses in quantitative analysis are required, uh, which are easily covered by if you meet uh, the statistical course or engineering economy course, so there itself. So the general engineering management programs are, you know, quantitative analysis is easier because they already have inbuilt uh, some of the courses there. Um, and the admission requirements, um, you know, again, uh, we used to have a very prescriptive GPA, uh, but, you know, uh, every country has different mechanisms, right? Some have first class distinction, um, you know, GPA out of 10, GPA out of four. And so we have specified um, that the EM program will require a minimum GPA or other academic competence from an ABED accredited undergraduate engineering or of equivalent accreditation in the country where the student received their bachelor's degree. So you might have in Australia, Institution of Engineers Australia, uh, which um, you know, certifies the program. And so that is fine. Um, so as long as they've done uh, an engineering or other degree from uh, certified in their country, that's perfectly fine for such you know, uh, requirements to be there for the master's level. Um, sometimes, you know, you do have students from people who may not have done engineering, but may have done some science. So as long as they have a required, you know, calculus and others to handle the quantitative courses in engineering management, that is perfectly fine. So that way the admission requirements are there. And then, um, you know, then you have an exit way. Now, when we look for at the program certification, one of the things we see, okay, do you have a policy? And then do you, you know, actually enforce the policy? And if there are exceptions, which will be there, right? Because you cannot define a person for life with the GPA they got, you know, five years ago. And so uh, they, you know, in that case, there is a recognition that this person had a lower GPA and this is, uh, you know, on a provisional basis, they're being admitted or whatever. And so you document it. Um, and so that's the admission requirements. 
administrative support uh, students must have an academic advisor and this is important because at the graduate level students have elective choices and they should be able to see go to a person uh, it doesn't have to be a faculty we have seen programs where uh, the academic advisor is not necessarily a faculty um, and so uh, but there is one person who uh, helps students complete their program of study uh, their graduation and helps them with uh, course selection and things like that the program must have access to sufficient resources um, to meet the needs of the targeted population. Um, and that is important because a lot of engineering management programs are cash cows in many universities, even in my university, um, you know, our engineering management program is the largest graduate program at the master's level, double the size of the next largest, which is MBA. So clearly engineering management uh, people uh, uh, programs are highly popular um, everywhere. And so a lot of times the resources are not put in, the piece is collected. And so this uh, administrative support, when we look at the certification visit, we also meet the Dean, Provost, President and make sure that uh, money is going back uh, and reinvested in engineering management programs and not just used to generate the cash. The student must have access to appropriate literature. Um, and so these days, um, you know, libraries are important, ebooks, um, electronic uh, collections and periodicals. Uh, generally, most universities have no problem. We haven't seen any university where, you know, there is a lack of it. In fact, uh, it's, if anything, it is being, you know, uh, vastly expanded because of the lower cost of electronic uh, access to uh, databases. So, um, so those are the um, academic requirements as you saw, they're not very onerous, but at the same time, they ensure quality and basically define what someone graduating with a master's in engineering management should be, which covers the MBOC, some quantitative courses, um, some qualitative, some management courses required, and then statistics, um, engineering economy or financial management and so forth. Uh, and then you have the admission requirements. Now, should um, someone think, okay, I might, you know, I'm interested in applying. Uh, what we have is we have a free Zoom consultation. So um, at the end, I'm going to give you the link where you can go online and just fill a form and, you know, give your website and then send it to ACM headquarters. ACM headquarters will assign someone from the university college uh, to have a Zoom session with you and quickly go through it and it doesn't cost you anything. And then they will say, okay, you know what? Uh, you need one course in this or, you know, uh, this is lacking or whatever, make this minor change. So you get a free consultation. So you don't have to do all the work and then find you don't meet the requirements. Preliminarily, the academic requirements and others, um, you know, can be uh, worked out initially so that then you can put in all the hard work for the study guide. Uh, program administrators sh um, should provide a self-study guide. And the self-study guide, again, is basically following and addressing each of the academic requirements. You know, one course in statistics or quality. EM, you know, 660 course is quality engineering. It's required by all courses, it, uh, students, it's core course. So this meets the program requirement. So it's not, um, you know, very onerous. It's basically addressing each of the criteria and saying, hey, you know, we meet those requirements. Uh, and then uh, along with the study guide, uh, you pay the fee uh, at the ACM headquarters. And then they inform the university college. We have received an application for certification. And then, um, you know, typically I or someone will get in touch um, with the person who is uh, submitted the study guide and then uh, start planning for a visit uh, and then notify what materials we need to see when we come for a visit. Uh, and then, uh, you know, once the visit is done, um, you know, uh, we provide some verbal feedback at the end of the day. And then uh, within three months, a full report is given. Uh, but, you know, informally we inform uh, people, well, it looks like you met requirements, uh, you know, but we are going to make some recommendations this is not going to hold your uh, certification, but you know this is something you, you know you could uh, look at making a change, you know, at, at some point. 
So um, generally during the visit itself, we have a team of two evaluators uh, who will be selected by the certification college for evaluating the program. Uh, and all uh, evaluators be members of ACM. So they have had exposure, they know the MBOC, they have uh, you know, themselves coming from a background where they understand the certification standards. Typically they would have been trained uh, to evaluate um, the programs. Uh, and so uh, those uh, two members will come. The team will be discussed with the chair of the applying program. And sometimes someone might say, well, this person uh, has a conflict uh, you know, it would be a little bit of a problem for us. Um, and then we would say, okay, fine, you know, we'll uh, have another one. So we make sure and we follow the same system that ABIT follows that uh, there's no conflict of interest, uh, which is which is there when the team visits. And the certification team, um, you know, uh, can clarify and collect any additional information before the visit. Uh, typically, when they come, there has to be a room uh, with the internet access and a printer, uh, should they want to print. But uh, where uh, in that room, uh, a lot of other material can be presented. Example, uh, some, you know, few copies of student files, admission files and transcripts uh, with the personal data redacted. So they can say, okay, yep, the person had a GPA of three, uh, 2.8, a minimum GPA requirement is 2.75. So this person was admitted, or you have a candidate who came on a provisional or conditional basis because uh, they didn't have the required calculus or something, and they were required to take some extra courses. Or they came with a lower GPA, so they had to do, they were on probation uh, or for the first semester and were required to achieve a certain GPA, things like that. Then uh, some examples of uh, projects, some examples of exams, uh, worst student, best student, average, um, you know, so to give an understanding of what, what is there. And then uh, capstone project reports. Um, and then uh, if you have some videotapes of project presentation um, for the capstone project or other project um, um, presentation, and then some, you know, course syllabi, textbooks, etc. So these can be kept, um, you know, in in that room, and the evaluators will go through it um, during the course of the day uh, and take any notes, etc. So you must be wondering, uh, what what did you do all of last year, right? Uh, because there was a pandemic. So did you visit? Uh, well, we were just as active last year as well. Uh, we did everything on Zoom. Um, uh, both new certifications and recertification, uh, but there was a lot of tons of data that had to be made available beforehand. And so um, hopefully, you know, we will go back to normal once uh, things are normal, uh, both within here, US and globally as well. Um, so what happens during the visit? Uh, so some of the meetings that happen is the team typically meets the EM program director and the department chair uh, meet with key EM faculty who teach some course, core courses, a tour of the facilities, a review student papers and records, a meet with the dean, uh, typically in the afternoon uh, in between. Uh, and if there are some uh, support faculty who are there uh, teaching other elective courses or other things and meet with students individually and small groups. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, not a lot of time, 15, 20 minutes um, with the students and then, um, and meeting with the alumni. So this alumni requirement actually uh, is very interesting because it also means that a program cannot be certified until you have some students who have graduated. We had uh, in the past some, uh, you know, universities that applied for graduation even before their first student had graduated. Uh, unfortunately, ACM can only certify programs where uh, students have graduated, uh, at least a few students, even if it's a new program. So uh, the outcomes are typically, um, you know, um, we have an exit interview at the end of the day with the department chair and the engineering management uh, director um, or just the engineering management program director and uh, certification recommendation 
uh, will be presented to the a ACM Certification College by the two evaluators. And the program found to be in conformance will receive a full um, you know, four year certification. And that includes the part of the year. So it typically works out to five years. Um, so we don't cut it because our renewal is by calendar year, not by the date. Otherwise, uh, every program has a different date. So we do it by calendar years. Um, so it, so we, you know, send and, and typically a plaque comes in and I'll show that to you. So, um, some of the benefits um, of ACM certified master's programs, um, you know, um, they represent outstanding achievement. Um, and they also, you know, are included in the elite of the programs. Certified programs are recognized on the ACM website. And this is the logo that ACM provides that uh, certified programs are able to use this pro logo on all advertisement and on their web. And from my own ex uh, experience, you know, uh, if I take off my hat as program director and as, uh, you know, ACM director and put on my cap as ACM program director, you know, our program shot up. We had a small university, state university in Minnesota. And once our program was certified, our international demand shot up a lot. Um, you know, we were nowhere in the ranking. We are now in the, you know, uh, US news ranking as well as a small university. Uh, engineering management is the highest ranked program. And so actually what happens is the category, the capability of the GPAs of students entering the program also increased. And so uh, a lot of times the benefits are huge, um, especially we started getting uh, people from the defense at our wow. local, local camp and, you know, because it was a certified program. So in fact, now, you know, we are so big uh, that we have to, you know, be uh, very selective in our admissions. And I would give that, um, you know, um, credit to the ACM certification that we obtained as a smaller university uh, for, you know, uh, uh, so, so the benefits are large uh, for the growth, stability, uh, recognition, ACM website. A lot of times people uh, come in and I say, you know, why did you come to this university? They said, oh, we went to the engineering management and it came to the ACM website and there was listed 200 colleges and only these were certified, so we, uh, I applied here. So, uh, so the benefits are there. Students also have a lot of benefits. Um, they have access, you know, many of our certified programs also have uh, partnership programs with ACM. And so they get access to the journals, um, you know, uh, and since EM, uh, there's a small chapter, certified programs typically are very, become very large. And so we have a larger number of students and then um, the other benefit you know, of students is that they are able to get a CAEM certified associate in engineering management um, certification. And for students with no experience or one or two years experience graduating uh, and then getting this uh, title, you know, certification is fantastic. So a large number of our students apply for it and obtain it. They're waiting as soon as they graduate, um, we let uh, ACM headquarters know that the student has graduated. They don't have to sit the four hour exam like other students and they're able to uh, directly get the C CAEM certification just by um, uh, filling the application and, and paying the fee. Uh, there is no exam fee or there's no exam. And the reason for that is that our, the syllabus of these are related to the MBOC uh, and all of the required courses. That's for, there is no need for them to write the exam. Uh, so what are the costs, right? Um, so the typically, um, uh, and this fee has been fixed for many years now, um, at least I think eight or 10 years, um, we charge 2,500 as of uh, 2021 and the travel cost of the two member team. And follow-up visits, if any, cost 1500 plus travel cost. But I haven't seen this in the last 10 to 15 years, um, any follow-up visits, because uh, most of the work we do is before the visit itself. Uh, and, and so uh, there is generally no need for follow-up, but the costs are there and should it be needed. For recertification, the fee is lower. Uh, it's only 2000 and then only one 
uh, if, uh, you know, member from the university college visits to certify. Uh, and so uh, the recertification process is much simpler. Uh, and at that point, the university college wants to know what are the changes made uh, since the last certification. Uh, and then, uh, you know, our current standards being maintained um, you know, for admission, for um, the academic standards, quality, and so forth. Um, and again, the, the academic uh, part, you know, whoever the university is applying, they cover the travel costs as well. So some of the certified programs are over here. Uh, Missouri SNT, um, you know, one of the very old universities that has been certified for probably the longest time. And then also the Old Dominion University. Drexel, which is a private university, is a certified uh, British university in, in Dubai. And our newest member is, uh, I think, University of Nebraska, Lincoln, uh, which was certified last year during the pandemic on a Zoom visit, a high quality program uh, that uh, is certified. And typically this is uh, an example of a plaque that I had just took a photo. It hangs um, right outside in our engineering management. Everyone coming in are able to see that. And now ACM has also got a logo for certified programs. At some stage, um, you know, uh, we'll look at decals uh, like, uh, you know, for, uh, for that as well. So if you, if you want to get your graduate program certified, you can just go to the ACM website, right? And uh, under certification, graduate program certification, um, and go from there, right? So what I'll do is, uh, I'm going to um, show one more thing before I go to questions, and that is going to be um, um, on a, a, a quick way of seeing whether your program is certified or not. So, um, so this is just like a cheat sheet I have, which um, you know I use typically when I work on Zoom. So if someone says, okay, I want to have a Zoom session, I email them this and say, okay, here it is. Uh, just uh, do a self-assessment. It shouldn't take more than you know, 10, 15 minutes, right? So uh, total credits in the program, is it 30, 33, 32, whatever, and then qualitative and quantitative, right? So we want to make sure two quantitative courses are there. Uh, and then you look at your curriculum and say, okay, do I have uh, some of the, how many of these domains am I covering? Now, typically, I don't think there's a program that covers all the domains, right? So that is not the intent here. Like legal issues in engineering management, some programs might have it as an elective, others may have none. So uh, it is just an uh, thing for you to see, you know, um, uh, what are the areas that are there? And if it's yes, um, then you write, okay, you know, um, quality management. So you write, you know, quality engineering course, uh, EM, you know, 660 quality engineering. And then if it's an elective, you put a star asterisk um, so that we know that it's there. Then what are, are you having one third of the courses in management strategy leadership, right? So you have 10 courses around three courses you know, are there three or four in management, operation management, project management, et cetera. Or one to have an EM rubric. So are they taught by EM faculty, right? Uh, where they have control on that one third of the courses. Is capstone a requirement? Okay, it's not. Well then do you have projects uh, embedded in various courses? Yes, okay, that, that's good. Uh, do you have quality engineering or statistics or uh, risk management, anything that is using some statistical uh, tools in the course, it can be a Six Sigma course, you know, and you may have your statistical tools in that. Um, and then we have a course in engineering economy or financial management or anything related to that. And then quantitative analysis, um, you know, uh, which I also, we also have it at the top here at both places, but this is the checkbox over here, all right? So uh, the last thing is the ACM website. So if you go to acm.org, and then once you go there, you click on certification, graduate program certification, and right on the web, you have uh, an interest. You know, you want to fill it, your name, department, uh, your email address, and submit it. it. Goes to the ACM world headquarters, and then they will assign 
uh, someone to come and have a look at it. And here are the academic standards, which I went through. You can click it, download it, and go through that, all right? Okay, so I have uh, uh, 15 minutes here for Q&A. So I'll hand over to Shruti. Uh, yeah, so Shruti, can you send me a chat message with the questions and I'll go through that. I think, um, Shruti, if you are willing to just read them for him, I'm not okay. sure if we're yeah, sure, able to sure. do that. Um, yeah. I wanna just also start too with Ben, um, since you kind of came into the last questions here, that particular, the last document, the Word document that you just depicted, um, folks are wondering if they could have access to that. Um, it seems that the links on the website are something similar, but not in the exact same format. So I okay. um, just wanted you to address that first while we're on the topic to see if that, that Word document would be made available to those interested. Okay, so what I I'll do is... Yeah, so what I'll do is um, I'm happy to get this uploaded. I'll send it to Angie today. At the same time, uh, while I'm answering, I'll see if I can upload this file uh, somehow uh, over there. If the capabilities are there, then I can. Uh, at this stage, it doesn't look like that. But um, if you have got the email address, you know, capturing of the people who have attended, I can send it to our uh, director of communications right after this, and you can email it to all the people who are there uh, because uploading on the web might take some time. So yes, absolutely happy to share it with you now. Thank you. So uh, can we go to the question? Okay, so should I start from reverse? Uh, from Kelly Schneider. So, uh, so the question is, you know, we have a full-time person, right, um, doing uh, that was required. So the full-time person is there, but they don't have to be doing only that, right? So I was program director. I was also the department chair for mechanical and manufacturing engineering. I was still meeting the requirement, or I was teaching something else at the undergraduate level. Absolutely, as long as there's one person responsible. Um, you know, for the EM program that meets the requirement and the intent of it, right? Right, so uh, then there are a few questions uh, which were like, uh, which came like right in the beginning. So do you want me to like read them? Please, please, yes. That'll be great, I guess. So uh, the first question uh, we had is, I graduated in 2016 with my MS in engineering management. How do I now determine the program standards? Um, so is this like a student question or? Um... Uh, this is from uh, Mr. Arthur. Yeah, I can elaborate if you want me to. Okay, so we- Please, Arthur. Yeah, yeah, okay, I got it now. So I saw the question now. So um, Arthur, the question is, we don't certify individuals, we certify the program, right? Uh, so was that, does that answer your question? Can I, can, I, can, I, can I say something about it? Yes, please. Our, our question. Okay, so my question was, um, because um, it, it, first of all, I want to say, I like to say thank you for the exposure. Um, but also, I guess I graduated in 2016, but uh, so based on what you just explained, how do I now determine if because um, most of the affiliated universities like you just show, I don't see my university listed. So how do I know whether the university I graduated from 2016 with my MS in engineering management is a certified um, program from the ASEM? Okay, so, um, so what happens is if you look at program certification, it is a guidance for future students to say, hey, this program is certified it meets the ACM's you know, academic standards. Now there are other programs that meet it, but they never applied for certification, right? So your program could well meet that requirement. But the only requirement ACM says is, because we have not certified your program, you'll have to sit an exam, um, C-A-E-M exam, a four hour exam, and you get the same certification, individual pro um, professional certification as someone from a certified program. So you can still do it. All you have to do is sit the exam. Uh, okay. And that would you know, put you at par with anyone who comes to the certified program as well. 
Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Sure. So the next question is uh, regarding the capstone project. Is it okay uh, if the culminating experience is called a comprehensive study slash culminating experience? Okay. So the name can be anything. The intent is it's a project where they have to do something, right? So example, when we applied for certification, we didn't have a capstone project. So we got an informal assessment done about 10, 15 years ago. Uh, at that point, uh, they said, well, this is a star paper. You can sit in the library and write up something and give it. What are you doing actually? So as long as it's a project that actually doesn't review some work and write up, but you're, even if you're doing analysis, you're collecting data, or you're doing like a Six Sigma project at a company, these are all projects. So that is the, the thing, you can, name can be anything. So when we look at the project report, we say, yep, this is a project, whatever the name of it is, it doesn't matter, right? Thank you. Um, the next question is, it says, considering the fact that engineering managers are expected to oversee complex enterprises, would it be appropriate to at least have a course in system dynamics taught to these EM managers? Right. So, um, you know, um, the key is, if you look at it, when I uh, went for certification, there were only two programs that were certified because uh, the, the programs, uh, when uh, I did a research and looked at the 200 programs in the US and said, okay, how many programs meet the standards? Well, less than 5% of the programs are meeting the standards because there were so many requirements uh, that were there. So these requirements are the basic minimum requirements that are there there would be a lot of programs that have the system dynamics uh, as a required course. However, you know, uh, in engineering management, it's not a required course. It's a great course to have as an elective. So if we add uh, more requirements, what's going to happen is very few programs will be able to meet the standard. And so when we ACM set the standard, let's say, okay, how do you define an engineering manage, uh, manager or engineering management curriculum? Okay, what is the basic requirement? They need to have some management, they need to have quantitative analysis, do some calculations, do some statistics, and these are the requirements. So this does not limit any program from having system dynamics or the other courses as a core course. Uh, thank you. I hope that helped. Uh, the next question says, uh, what would it take to establish an engineering management program at universities in West Africa to be certified by the ASEM? Um, so, you know, we are more than happy to work uh, at no cost, uh, you know, with people who are starting an engineering management program. In fact, we have had three or four programs, including one in Australia that has taken a syllabus and worked with us to, from the get-go to set up a syllabus and course curriculum that meets ACM requirements right from the beginning. Uh, and so we are more than happy an email inquiry to ACM World Headquarters will be the step one that will activate um, someone contacting you, setting up a Zoom session and going through that and working with you and helping you uh, with the course uh, structure so that you can actually go through and say, okay, you know, we'll start a program and uh, that from the get go, you know, when we applied myself 15 years ago, I wish I had known there was something called ACM that was certifying program because our program was not meeting the requirements. And so we had to spend a year and a half to make those changes. Um, and so, uh, you know, if a program is doing right in the beginning, that is fantastic. It's a much painless, much easier process. So we are more than happy to work at no cost to you. I just go to the website, acm.org and click on uh, graduate uh, certification, graduate program, fill the form and the world headquarters will then activate and have uh, ACM professionals um, help you with, with that. Thank you. Great, so the next question is, uh, will the team also meet the provost and slash or president or just the dean as the high level leadership? They're asking for, uh, I think the scheduling planning. Um, actually in the past we used to meet uh, but as time went on, we found that it becomes a scheduling issue uh, for a lot of the programs. And so, uh, so we leave it up to the, you know, um, the 
program director and for them to decide if the dean decides everything and then you have a figurehead as a provost or president then there is no need but sometimes what happens is uh, the you know the university is taking funds off and resources from the engineering management program at that time we are actually on your side uh, you know saying hey your certification will be held up you know if you're trying to drain the resources out of this program and starve it so the intent of meeting the provost and president is to be your partner and help the em program long term stability it is not uh, something that is going to impact the certification so when we make the schedule we work very closely with uh, the program director and then set up the schedule so it's not like this is it we want no it's a joint uh, uh, two way communication and then that's how we set it but the intent is for that uh, because our needs are met with the dean and department and program director thank you so the next question is like can you provide an example that the curriculum and the embark are well aligned all right so um so um the embark uh to you know give the long history of it uh was actually you know not not even you know there when the program certification standards were set uh at university of alabama huntsville since then embark has been changing adding more domains you know removing some domains uh marketing was removed and so syllabuses cannot be curriculum cannot be changed uh that easily right so embock is a guide uh for the ocean for the acm programs now you know as i said you know legal issues you know it's there in the embock it doesn't mean embock is more as a guidance for engineering management professionals to say that this is the breadth of places where engineering management are there and if you look at how an embock is done it's uh, done by the you know um, lineation study where you actually look at ask people you're an engineering manager what do you do you're an engineering manager or engineer working in engineering management what do you do as a em professional and then we say this is the embock you know and then we write what is the content of it and then acm programs you know take from it so if you look at the core courses quality engineering engineering economy these are all part of it and so every program will have a different focus some programs in midwest are heavy in manufacturing they might be more oriented to six sigma and other tools etc you know some may be in it software they might have more scrum uh, in uh, agile project management and other things so um, some i have seen in south africa and other countries where petroleum you know mine management risk management in australia so uh, the embock is a guidance uh, it is if you notice at the requirements it doesn't say you have to have all of the requirements it's it's a guidance when someone in west africa is starting a program the embock should be the place where you say okay this is the breadth of it what applies to the students in our area what would add value to our region to our economy you know what are the needs in our economy and then pick the courses from that thank you um i think that was our last question and we're all done with the questions if there are any further questions you can type it in the chat box or you could just ask it right now Yeah, feel free to come off mute anyone with any lingering questions um i will make sure um that all registrants receive um that document that was requested from ben um, and perhaps even the slide deck as well, if Ben is willing to share. Um, and then, like we said, it will also be uh, up on YouTube probably within a week's time um, in order to do that. Any last questions? Thanks, Shruti. And thank you so much, Ben. Sure. Um, I learned a lot. Not that I'm in academia and won't do this, but um, what I might be able to do to influence um, my alma mater to do something like this. yeah it, it's a painless process to close it you know please feel free to connect with me through acm and we are here our intent is to increase the family of programs that are uh, certified and we'll work with you to get your program certified so i welcome you to please join the family of high class programs globally that are certified by acm and thank you for attending uh, we have taken one of one hour of your valuable time during the summer uh thank you and uh, good wishes to everyone